Hey folks, it's Charlie here. This is my second screen recording. This is fantastic. I can't believe I haven't been doing this all the time. Um, so I got two followers now on Twitter. I'm following 57, 62 tweets. I've been on Twitter all weekend and some of it's fun, but a lot of it's just, I don't know. DNC loves it. I don't know. It's just random stuff. I'm pretty much using it trying just to uh, scope artists. Uh, try and find some that actually want to do work, but that's neither here nor there. So uh, what I wanted to talk about is uh, Mr. C.B. Sabolsky at Marvel, because I think him and Jim Lee at DC are trolling us. And I'll get to that in a second, but let me read what uh, C.B. posted. Uh, yes, Marvel will be conducting portfolio reviews for up-and-coming artists at its terrific con in Connecticut this coming weekend. Drop-off details will be posted soon. Stay tuned. And then you got the usual banter about uh, writers and all that type of stuff. I don't even know how it goes for uh, a writer to be uh, selected at Marvel. You probably have to work for years and years in the industry. Uh, not in the industry, in some sort of... I don't know. I don't know how it goes for Marvel. And then uh, Jim Lee uh, posted some of his re 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 uh, rejection letters uh, from Marvel and DC. Uh, I thought it was funny. It's like, uh, when you learn to draw hands, um, that's kind of a thing, uh, in comic book industry, uh, Todd McFarlane also talked about too, that he spent just like a week learning how to try and draw hands better. Um, and I think I know why the big two are pushing this right now, trying to, um, get some hot buzz under, uh, under their umbrellas. All right. Back in the day. Um, in the 90s, um, it was all about the artists. It was all about uh, writers, too. Uh, not to the extent about the artists, but the writers. So you didn't have uh, a million writers and a million artists jumping from book to book to book. You had a consistent writer. You had a consistent artist. And you were picking up that book for that storyline because of what they were doing. Uh, X-Men were a good example of this. Chris Claremont wrote the X-Men forever. One of several different artists, too. Um, but they were consistent long runs, and that's how they brought them in. Now, DC was trying to do this, and I think uh, I think Marvel might be doing a little bit too. They were doing the, the artist-focused comic books where they were uh, putting the artist's names first, and they were having like big spreads, uh, big spreads on their covers, which I thought was stupid too because the people inside that were doing uh, the art – weren't the same people that were doing the, the, the cover art. So it's kind of a rope and dope. You're getting like this beautiful cover by Jim Lee and then you open it up and you have uh, 3D models for all the Batman uh, panels on the inside. And I don't care what anybody says. Anybody that puts hashtag uh, move the needle and they're showing a DC Batman comic book, uh, they're, they're being paid by somebody or they're just trolling. Their, it's just junk. Uh, they're just trolling you. So I was... Just kind of hanging out because I have no friends and I'm lonely. And I was trying to figure out why they were doing this. Why were DC and Marvel all of a sudden talking about uh, setting us submissions and wanting to do work at the Big Two? When for such a long time, Marvel and DC literally just spit in the faces of everybody. I mean, they did. They were like, bzz, 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 you know, I don't care about you, your your opinions on my story. But the fact that I decided to turn this character into this and completely erase this and Quicksilver is not Magneto's uh, son anymore, blah, 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 blah. It just didn't matter. For years, actually, they treated uh, comic book uh, fans, uh, comic book enthusiasts, like trash. And they're doing it because of Comicsgate. It just, it is, it popped in my head. And I think, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the reason why. Um, so you have, uh, Trump Space Force, uh, which is going to be awesome. Berserk or not, which sounds actually like a pretty good story. I'm going to have to check it out. Um, of course you have diversity in comics with, uh, John Breger's Lost Soul. And then he just pushed out Iron Sights. It's like almost a half a mil like on his own hair you have ethan van skyver uh with cyber frog which just absolutely rocked it it was just 
he nailed it. And then what just absolutely rocked for me, uh, finding out that on Monday it's going to launch, not in two weeks, uh, Graveyard Shift. And I think, I'm not sure, he might have pushed it up. He said two weeks, and then all of a sudden it was like we're launching this Monday. I think um, he was smart. He's like, you know what, the buzz on this thing is just going off the chains. I need to, I need to launch this now. Um, so it's the enthusiasm in Comicsgate that is forcing the, the big two to, they're, they're going to fake it. I'm, I'm letting you know right now. All right. Um, they're saying that they want to bring in new talent and stuff like that, but they're not going to, they're not going to allow that to happen. Um, I work in an industry right now and it's nothing but SJWs. I literally just got into a, I don't want to say a fight, but like just listening to people go back and forth about wokeness and SJW stuff. And I was just like, are you people insane? It was like everything that they were saying was saying and what they were making excuses for, uh, was pretty evil and wrong. Um, but they didn't see it. Um, and Marvel is just filled with that stuff. And DC, it's starting to bubble up too. If you look at their comic books, if you look at what they're doing, um, it's, yeah, it's pretty bad. But they have no buzz. And that's the main point of this little tit for tat I'm doing right now. Um, there's no buzz about Marvel. Nobody cares. Extinction is going on where they literally just killed two characters. And like I said, there's, there's been some after effects of realizing that they killed a, a character that I knew for like a long time, Cable, and then replaced them with a younger version, which whatever, I don't care. Didn't, nothing matters. Um, and they killed Bloodstorm. Um, I'm sure they're going to kill some other ones. And then uh, I haven't been reading uh, Avengers, but I hear they, they killed Thanos and all this other type of stuff. And all Marvel's doing now is trying to put the characters that they've made billions of dollars with in their movies and their comic books. Um, but I don't think it's going to work. I think um, DC's been talking about it too, I, but I don't think he's used this term yet, so I'm going to say it first, hopefully. Terminal Velocity. They've reached the point of no return on their industries. Not Indiegogo, uh, Graveyard Shift, uh, Iron Sights, Jawbreakers, Cyberfrog. Like, that's a whole different uh, streamline, and I'll get that in a second. But on the big two, they've reached terminal velocity. Possibly. I don't know. It's, it's, getting, it's getting darn close. And nobody cares anymore. And I've talked about this before. Um, when you break a brand, when you break, uh, when you break a character's mythos, it's very hard to get that back. Very hard. They haven't gotten it back with Captain America. They completely trashed him. Uh, the X-Men are junk. Nobody cares about them. You know, they're going to make billions of dollars when they go into the movies, but that's only for a bit. You have to understand, like, the movie industry is more harsh than the comic book industry, right? If, if there's a bad movie, people aren't going to go see the next one. If there's a bad comic book, people will still buy those comic books. Uh, Ethan Van Skyver has said it, like, Star Wars is screwed. I was on, uh, of course, I was on Twitter. That's just what we do now, I guess. Um... And somebody pointed out, it's like, in 40 years, like, they had an opportunity to have Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, and uh, Chancellor Leia, I guess what was her name. I didn't, I didn't watch the second uh, filling in The Last Jedi. Um, they had them all on the screen together, and they didn't do it. They decided to destroy those characters. And people were like, you know what, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this. So they just, Star Wars is now a damaged brand. And they don't have comics to back them up to rebuild new fans. Right? So they released too many movies and they were all trash. And now they're like, what do we do now? It was like, it was the same thing that happened with Transformers. They just started producing bad movies and too many of them too quickly. And now they're junk because they got greedy. And there aren't uh, avenues to get people into them. You have to understand, like, Everybody going to see those movies, like, 
at one point or time probably picked up a comic book or had a friend that picked up a comic book, you know, or talked about it growing up. Like we didn't have the internet. There weren't as many avenues of approach. You know, when those movies go bad and they don't have the comic books creating new people to talk about the buzz of what's happening in the comics, new storylines, people are going to be like, eh, I don't care. I mean, they've already done how many reboots of Spider-Man? That one's still hurting. Um, they've told the story horribly of the Phoenix once, and then they were going to attempt to do it again. I'm not sure if that movie's even going to come out now, because now they're going to save it for when Fox uh, completes his purchase, well, Marvel completes his purchase of Fox. But Marvel Comics doesn't have any buzz around them to start, you know, having kids grow up with these characters and having a vested interest in them. And that's the problem. And that's why I think uh, C.B. Sobolski and Jim Lee, and this is not the last of it, are going to be talking about uh, you know, finding great new talent and, and trying to bring them in when they're not going to do it. If you don't have the correct pedigree, you're not going to get hired by these people. They're just... They're just not going to do it. Um, and it's sad. Like the buzz should be around the X-Men. But it's not. And I'll get into it when I do a comic book review. But I saw the cover art. Man, man I hate. Whatever. I'm just going to say it anyways. I hate talking about art because. No, I should have a standard about it. I think even though I can't draw or create that stuff, I should be also be able to talk about art. All right. That's, that's how I'm going to justify it. Um, there should be a standard. Um, I saw the cover art for Uncanny X-Men, and then I saw the cover art for Uncanny X-Men number two, and I saw it for three. It was It's not that hard to find out online. And it looks like completely trash. Like the characters up front are at a weird angle, and everybody's kind of like coming out from behind. Like they're all trying like to cram in themselves for like for a selfie or some stupid stuff. And they have Bishop in front, who literally tried to kill a baby. He tried to kill, like, that was his thing. He was going to kill Hope Summers, Scott Summers' uh, granddaughter, Cable's daughter. Oh, by the way, man, they haven't even talked about that. Hope doesn't know her dad was killed. Oh, that's going to be interesting. I'm sure they're going to wipe that away. Um, Jesus, man, that one had repercussions. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they're doing now. Jeez, I can, actually, man, every time I think about them killing Cable, I can't believe that. That was bad. That was the worst thing when they killed Cyclops. When they killed Cyclops. I don't know. Anyways, but yeah. So, there's no buzz about it. There's no buzz about the Avengers. Like, the Avengers are literally back together. And everybody's like, uh I made a, a Twitter post about how She-Hulk looks stupid. Um... I don't understand it. Anyways, whatever. Once again, these are just my rants on all things completely stupid.